Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Karen Yang. And I'm Raymond Yang. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Tsunami strikes Indonesia, killing hundreds of people. Police arrest six supercar drivers for alleged speeding as one has an accident on Taipo Road. And hundreds march against the Justice Department chief for not prosecuting former chief executive Lin Chen Ying. At least 222 are dead and hundreds of others have been injured after a tsunami swept through the coast of Sunda Strait between the Indonesian islands of Java and Sumatra. It's believed the tsunami was triggered by an underwater landslide caused by a volcanic eruption on one of the nearby islands. The Archipelago's Disaster Agency has apologized for failing to issue a tsunami warning. This footage, captured by an audience member at a concert, shows just how dangerous a tsunami can be. This was what was left of the stage after the massive wave hit the coast. Tragically, the Indonesian band that was on stage, named Seventeen, later confirmed on Twitter that its guitarist, bassist and a road manager perished in the horrific disaster. Debris littered the roads of coastal towns as water slowly receded. Residents were still trying to come to terms with what had happened. The tsunami struck at around 9.30 p.m. last night along Indonesia's Sunda Strait, which separates the islands of Sumatra and Java. Geologists suspected it was caused by undersea landslides following the eruption of the Anak Krakatau volcano. The volcano, which had been increasingly active in recent months, erupted for 2 minutes and 12 seconds on Friday, producing an ash cloud that shot up 400 meters in the air. Authorities said high tides caused by a full moon may have also strengthened the tsunami. As dawn broke, the damage to coastal areas became more apparent. Countless numbers of buildings were destroyed, and blocked roads hampered rescue efforts. Emergency workers scoured the rubble looking for survivors, or more likely, bodies. Hospitals were operating at full capacity as the injured kept flooding in. Indonesian President Joko Widodo said personnel from both the Ministry for Social Affairs and the military were already on the ground for recovery work. He also warned that the death toll would surely rise in the coming days. The Archipelago's Disaster Management Agency has warned people on coastal areas such as Sarang at Banten province seen here to stay away from the shorelines as seas remained rough. The agency came under fire for failing to issue a tsunami warning. Worse still, the agency initially brushed aside the tsunami as a tidal surge and told the public not to panic. A spokesman apologized for the mistake, arguing there had been confusion as no earthquake was detected. The tsunami is the latest disaster to hit Indonesia this year. Earthquakes flattened parts of the tourist island of Lombok in August. A double earthquake and tsunami killed thousands on Sulawesi Island the following month. And nearly 200 people died when a Lion Air passenger plane crashed into the Java Sea in October. Locally, a Ferrari driver and his passenger escaped with minor injuries after their car crashed and landed upside down on Taipo Road this morning. Police arrested six supercar drivers for dangerous driving on the same road for allegedly speeding. This wrecked Ferrari came to a stop on its roof at around 7.30 a.m. after it crashed on Taipo Road in Chiang Ping near Sha Tin. One of its front wheels almost came off the impact. Debris was scattered on the road. Luckily, the driver and his passenger only suffered minor injuries. The luxury car was among six that were allegedly speeding on Taipo Road. Police arrested the drivers of the cars during an operation against illegal racing this morning. Officers had been watching the area since the beginning of the month, following reports of supercars traveling at high speed, usually in the early hours on Sunday. 
When officers approached the crashed car, three other drivers attempted to flee the scene in their vehicles. But they were stopped in Chinese University and at a bus stop on Taipo Road near the university. New Territories North Traffic Unit Acting Chief Superintendent Kong Wei Ming said the six supercars were traveling at about 98 kilometers per hour on average. The road speed limit was 50 kilometers per hour. Six male drivers aged between 43 and 70 were arrested for dangerous driving. Today was the third time police spotted speeding supercars in the area on a Sunday. Kong said they would investigate whether it was the same group of drivers each time. They will also check whether the six drivers knew each other and if they were racing. Hundreds of demonstrators marched in protest against the Department of Justice's decision not to prosecute former chief executive Leung Chen Ying over a deal with an Australian engineering firm before he became the city's leader. The organizer claimed some 1,200 people showed up at the rally, but police put the figure at 525, Riley Chan reports. Under gloomy skies and some light rain, hundreds of people joined a rally at Chater Garden in Central this afternoon to protest against the Department of Justice's decision not to prosecute former Chief Executive Lan Chen Ying. The march was organized by pro-democracy parties and set off for the Justice Secretary's office at Justice Place shortly before 3 p.m. Leung was accused of corruption and misconduct in public office for failing to declare a $15 million deal he made with Australian engineering firm UGL before he became the city's leader. After a four-year probe,